Hello, today's video we are continuing with viscosity and friction and this video is direct continuation of the previous video on friction so make sure you check out that video before watching this one. I'll put a link in the description below. Viscosity is also sometimes called internal friction because there is some similarity between viscous and frictional forces. However, viscosity only occurs in fluids such as air, water and so on. I will start this video by demonstrating uh, the nature of viscosity using a simple experiment that you can perform at home. Here I have a glass uh, container that contains a uh, mixture for crepes and uh, I'll actually put a recipe for crepes in the description below so you can prepare perfect crepes for you and your family. So here is my uh, mixture for crepes. It is a rather viscous fluid and we will see what that means at the end of this video. To demonstrate the nature of viscosity, I'll use a little bit of oil and I'll make a line like this. Rather, a little kind of straight line. And the uh, line is, as you can see, running between this glass and I will call it glass plate and this point over here. Now. I will use a simple wooden cut board and put it here close to the end of this line. What I will do is I will move, look, as I'm moving this wood, I am creating a shear uh, of uh, this oil, or in other terms, I am creating a velocity gradient uh, in, uh, in the oil or in this entire fluid. Now what is going on here? Let's think a little bit. Well, the layer of oil that is touching wooden plate is attracted by the wooden plate and as I am moving this wooden plate I am basically uh, moving that layer of oil that is close to it. The next layer of oil wants to be attracted to that layer of oil that is close to wood and it is following it and you can see this uh, phenomena is cascading down all the way to this wooden plate and at the wooden plate, velocity is zero because I'm not, uh, sorry, glass plate. I'm not moving this glass plate. So this part is fixed. And uh, because this is a uh, laminar motion and we will learn in future videos and a little bit in this one, I can always reverse this plus process. So I can always get from all the way here, I can get back where I started. And we will see that the law of viscosity that I will talk about today only applies to uh, laminar flows. There is a little bit of uh, spreading here that is due to molecular diffusion. But in principle, no matter how much I displace it, I can always return it to where it was. This would not be possible in turbulent flow. Now, very important, please imagine that this same phenomena is happening with the air that is between uh, glass and wooden plate. As I am moving wooden plate, this air is also moving close to the wooden plate, but unfortunately we cannot see it with our eyes. So that's why I use the mixture of uh, crepes and uh, oil to demonstrate this phenomena for you. Okay. Let me now adjust camera. Okay. <clears throat> What we saw in this experiment is the following. I had two plates. This was my wooden, uh, this was my, sorry, glass plate, and this was my wooden plate. And I moved wooden plate in, the dis in this direction. And uh, we said we can represent uh, fluid as a series of layers next to each other, like that. What I did when I moved this plate to the right, the glass plate had velocity zero, didn't move. Therefore, the layer next to glass plate didn't move at all. This layer moved a little bit, this layer moved a little bit more, and this layer was following the plate. And therefore, you saw I created this uh, profile in the velocity or the profile in the shearing of the layer. The force that I applied it is experimental evidence, is proportional to this gradient of velocity where delta z is the distance between plates. 
the force is also, and you can clearly use, you can, uh, this, this is intuitive. Force is also proportional to the area of these layers. Now, if I put this in two directions, in uh, two dimensions, this is, let's say, one layer of fluid, and underneath I have another layer of fluid. And viscosity arises due to intermolecular forces attract attracting uh, uh, layers to be close to each other. So there is there are molecules in this layer attracting red layer, and at the same time, red layer is attracting black layer. So you can see if the area of this is large, then there are more molecules that are attracting each other, and therefore I need to exert larger force. In other way, in other words, if my wooden plate was very big, attraction would be higher because there are more molecules between this layer and the wood that are attracting each other. So these two expressions tell me that force is proportional to the area and gradient of velocity. I can also express this as force over area is proportional to delta V over delta Z. And uh, here we are. This quantity, we call it tau, is shear stress. We see it has units of pascals as pressure, and this quantity over here uh, is basically velocity gradient, but we also call it sometimes a rate of shear deformation. And then a great man, Isaac Newton, put final touches on this and said, tau or shear stress is equal instead of proportional to some proportionality constant delta V over delta Z. And this over here is called Newton's law of viscosity. If we again, thanks to Isaac Newton, put Z in the limit case to go to zero, then tau can be written as mu, this becomes derivative, d derivative dV dZ. And uh, both of these are Newton's laws, Newton's law of viscosity. Mu, this uh, coefficient, is called dynamic uh, coefficient of viscosity, and uh, we can see the dynamic coefficient of viscosity is actually telling us what is the strength of these attractive forces between adjacent uh, layers in the fluid, and uh, how strong they are to resist uh, relative motion of, layer, of layers. Okay, uh, I would like to also tell you that this mu is function of temperature in the following way. If I plot here temperature, temperature in kelvins, let's say, and here mu, then as I am increasing temperature, mu is increasing for gases, such as air. So in our atmosphere, as I increase temperature, the viscosity of air increases. Opposite is observed for liquids, such as water. And you know this when you put oil on a hot pan, and uh, as the oil is heating up, it becomes more, sort of say, liquid, because the viscosity of oil decreased. This law, this great law of Isaac Newton, applies to uh, fluids for which we can assume that the motion is in these layers. In other words, if I have two plates, by the way, motion of fluid between two plates is also known as Kutte flow. If I have a layer moving like this, an adjacent layer, let's say moving at higher velocity, but there is no mixing between these layers. There is no mixing between adjacent layers. This type of flow is called laminar flow. And the law of Newton, Newton's law of viscosity in this form applies to laminar flow. If the flow is uh, nasty and it's going kind of in all directions, there is still prevailing direction, let's say, from left to right, but there is a lot of uh, wiggling in the flow, or to be more precise and physical, there is mixing between adjacent layers in the flow, then the flow is turbulent, and this law doesn't apply uh, to turbulent flows, to turbulent flows. 
Sometimes we also like to relate uh, viscosity to density of the fluid and then we divide mu with rho, where rho is uh, density of the fluid, rho, and uh, this is called nu or uh, kinematic uh, coefficient of viscosity. And uh, in atmospheric sciences we usually work rather with nu than mu. The very last thing that I will say here is uh, if you are interested to know how mu depends on T for air, because this is atmospheric science uh, channel, then I will tell you that mu for air is, this is highly, highly empirical, right? 2.791 times 10 to the power of minus 7, temperature to the power 0. 7355. So please don't uh, memorize this, but use it if you need it. So this is basically all that I had to say about uh, viscous, uh, viscosity. And I hope that today's video uh, kind of uh, sparkled your imagination. And when you see fluids uh, next time, water or anything, you will start to think about viscous forces and what is going on really uh, between uh, imaginary adjacent layers in the fluid. Maybe I can also say something that will be introduction for the next video actually. This mu in certain fluids is actually function of this rate of shear deformation. It's function of this. If this happens, that mu depends on how we shear the flow then these types of uh, fluids are called non-Newtonian fluids. Is mu is, if mu is constant and doesn't depend on, the, on this, then these are Newtonian fluids. But this will be more clear to you in the next video that will have a bunch of demonstrations on Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluids. Air is Newtonian fluid. I hope you like today video, today's video. Have an excellent rest of the day and see you in the next video. Cheers.